just when you think phase diagrams couldn't get more complicated than they already were, um, you realize that the eutectic, binary eutectic systems that you were looking at really aren't the hardest thing out there. Um, <laughs> here's the copper zinc phase diagram, for example. It's crazy. A lot of phase diagrams in materials science look like this. Things just aren't as straightforward as one might prefer. Let me go through a few things just on this. You've got what are called terminal solid solutions. So here along the bottom, you're going from a percentage of 0% uh, zinc, 100% copper, all the way to 100% zinc right here on the right. So the alpha phase and the eta phase, yes, that's eta, are, <laughs> are the pure copper and pure zinc forms, respectively. All along the way, you've got different um, solid phase structures. So we've got our beta phase right here, our gamma phase, our epsilon phase, our beta prime phase, and so on and so forth. Okay, These are called intermediate solid solutions. So they have slightly different structures from the alpha and the eta phases. They have different structures and they have different properties sometimes, physical properties. So they deserve their own name, okay? They deserve their own letter, Greek letter of the alphabet, um, and they have different structures than the solid solution. There's other things that can happen in uh, phase diagrams. For example, if you have a vertical line that looks like this on a phase diagram, that's an intermetallic compound. Intermetallic compounds exist as lines on the diagram and not areas because of the stoichiometry. So the composition of the compound is a very fixed value. For example, here you have two magnesiums for every lead, and that only occurs at a very fixed value for your percent composition. Of course, it's right about here at about 80% Okay, for your magnesium lead phase diagram. So intermetallic compounds can happen. Other things can happen on phase diagrams. We've talked about eutectic reactions um, in the last lecture, where you have a liquid that transforms into two different solid phases. So for example, for the lead 10 diagram that we talked about a lot last time, you have a liquid that goes to an alpha plus a beta phase. But other things can also occur. There's so-called eutectoid reactions, and yes, this is horrible. They should have given it a different name. It shouldn't be eutectic, eutectoid, and peritectic. It's terrible. It's just terrible. They sound too much alike, and it confuses me as well. But a eutectoid is different from a eutectic, and a eutectoid is when you have one solid phase that transforms into two other solid phases. All right. So a eutectic is when you have a liquid going to two distinct solid phases, and a eutectoid is when you have one solid phase that transforms to two different solid phases. All right. So an example of this would be in the um, carbon iron phase diagram, which we're going to talk about here in a few minutes, where you have the gamma phase going into the alpha plus cementite phase. All right, so that's a eutectoid. You also have paratectics. Too many X, right? Paratectic is when you have a liquid and a solid phase that transforms into a different solid phase, right? So for example, in our iron carbon phase diagram, which we're going to have in a minute, you have the delta solid phase plus the liquid phase going into the gamma solid phase, okay? So it goes from a delta to a gamma solid phase delta plus liquid to a gamma. All right, so what do these things look like on phase diagrams, your eutectoids and your paratectics? So here we go, eutectoid um, and paratectic. Eutectoids look like these on your phase diagram, very similar to the eutectics. So they look kind of similar and they sound kind of similar. The odds of getting these things confused are very high, so make sure that you have it straight in your head. A eutectoid transformation is indicated here. This is our copper zinc phase diagram, but instead of that crazy zoomed out thing that I showed you on the first slide, we're now zooming in to only look at a certain small range of temperatures and compositions. So here's the eutectoid transformation right here, where we're going from a delta phase to a gamma plus an epsilon phase, okay? So there's no liquids there, so you know it's not a eutectic, and it's a V shape, so it's a eutectoid. All right, paratectic, here we go with the paratectic. <laughs> We've got a liquid plus the solid phase 
becoming a totally different solid phase. And that happens here on the copper zinc phase diagram when it goes from the gamma solid phase plus liquid to the delta solid phase. All right, so that's an inverted V on our phase diagram. A little bit more vocabulary for you. We've got congruent and incongruent phase transformations. So a congruent phase transformation is one where there's no compositional alterations. So for example, the melting of a pure metal uh, going from a liquid to a solid phase or water moving to, to ice, okay? No compositional alteration there. Incongruent phase transformations, on the other hand, are when at least one of the phases ex experiences a compositional alteration. So eutectics and eutectoids are incongruent phase transformations. All right, so let's look at a confusing looking phase diagram and see if we can make some sense of it. This example says, specify the temperature and composition points at which any eutectics, eutectoids, paratectics, and congruent phase transformations occur for this hafnium vanadium phase diagram here. Okay, so what's happening here? We've got the range of temperature starting at 1,000 degrees Celsius and going up because nothing interesting happens below 1,000. And the composition and weight percent vanadium goes from zero, which is all hafnium, all the way up to 100% vanadium going to the right. Now you'll notice a few things. Um, there's lots of lines here and not a lot of letters on this phase diagram. Now this is typical. Oftentimes they'll label only the pure parts, okay? So this is all alpha, all beta, the hafnium vanadium compound right here, the liquid, and the pure vanadium. They've labeled that, but they haven't labeled any of the other regions. So you have to fill that in yourself on a lot of phase diagrams and figure out what it is um, most of the time. What happens is if it's between two pure areas, then you know that it's the sum of those two things in the region between the two pure ones. So if we go down here, I've filled it in, okay? So for example, here we have the liquid region, here we have the solid vanadium, right, structure. That means that this region in between these two is liquid plus solid vanadium, okay? Here we have this hafnium vanadium inter intermetallic compound structure, that's an intermetallic compound line right there, Okay, I think it's vertical. But anyway, here's a hafnium vanadium intermetallic compound. Here's pure vanadium. So that means that this region in here is the hafnium vanadium intermetallic compound plus pure vanadium. That's what that is right there. Okay, this right here, this little sliver, is alpha hafnium. And this is the hafnium vanadium intermetallic compound. So that means this region here is the sum of those two things. Okay. This right here is the beta phase, and over here is the alpha phase. So that means that this little triangle slice right here is alpha plus beta. Whoops. Okay, now this is liquid, this is beta, that means this is liquid plus beta. This is hafnium vanadium intermetallic compound, this is beta. That means that this is the beta plus the hafnium vanadium intermetallic compound, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you just label each region um, based upon if it's between two pure things, then it's the sum of those two pure things if it's in the area in between the two. All right, so now that we're labeled, now we can think about labeling things as eutectics, eutectoids, paratectics, and it also asked about congruent transformations. Okay. Eutectics first. Eutectic is when you have a liquid going to two solids, okay? So that occurs here, okay? You've got that V on the phase diagram. I've labeled the eutectics with red stars. So I have a eutectic right here. I've got a V and it's a liquid going to beta plus that inner metallic compound. Boom, there it is, okay? So there's a eutectic. There's also a eutectic right here. There's another little V that comes down right there and that's a liquid going to the vanadium plus the intermetallic compound right there. So those two are eutectics. Okay, there's another V. However, that V is a eutectoid, okay, and it's right here at the purple star. So here I have beta phase, and the beta phase goes to alpha plus the intermetallic compound. Okay, so that's a eutectoid. 
Now we have a congruent phase, okay? It's easier to see if you go back to this plot really fast. This is our little inverted V right here, okay? And in this little inverted V, um, what we've got is a transformation from the intermetallic compound to a liquid. And so that's a congruent phase transformation labeled in orange right here, okay? So there's some of the points. Um, hopefully it makes these phase transformations um, and phase diagrams a little bit easier to wrap your head around and a little bit easier to understand. Now that we've defined some things and gone through some vocabulary looking at these phase diagrams, let's look at probably one of the most important phase diagrams in material science, and that's the iron-carbon phase diagram. Of course, it's super important because it forms the foundation of steels, okay? So, lots of times when you're looking at these iron-carbon phase diagrams, you only look, up, look at it up to about 6.7 weight percent carbon because a lot of steels have a carbon concentration less than that. And so people tend to use just the part of the phase diagram that they need because the whole iron carbon phase diagram is super confusing. So they just use the part they need. All right, so here's a pretty typical looking one. We're going up to 6.7 weight percent. All right, let's define some terms. First of all, there's the alpha phase. And the alpha phase is this little light blue sliver on the left-hand side of this phase diagram. This alpha phase of iron is called ferrite. Ferrite has a BCC structure. Now we look at this guy right here, the gamma phase. Gamma phase is also called austenite. So instead of gamma iron, lots of times people say austenite. It has an FCC structure. Now there's also a delta phase of iron that occurs at higher temperatures but it's not super useful, okay? So most of the time, people don't talk about it a lot because it only exists at high temperatures and we don't use steels at super high temperatures in this very narrow sliver very often since it's not useful, not talked about. Okay, now, next one, cementite. That's an intermetallic compound and it's here pictured at the right-hand side. If the iron carbon phase diagram were to go on, you would see that it's just a vertical line, okay? Um, but it's cementite, an intermetallic compound. The intermetallic compound has the formula Fe3C, okay? So that's cementite. Now, looking at the phase diagram in more depth, there's a couple of important um, points. One is there's a eutectic. Okay, the eutectic here is here at point A, and it goes from the liquid phase to the gamma plus cementite phase right here. So that's our eutectic. And that takes um, place at 1148 degrees Celsius and a concentration of 4.3% by weight of carbon. Next, there's a eutectoid. The eutectoid takes place at point B here in our diagram. In the eutectoid, you're going from the austenite to the ferrite and cementite and that takes place at a concentration of 0.76% by weight carbon and a temperature of 727 degrees Celsius, okay? So those are our two points. Now, you have your um, eutectic isotherm labeled here at 1148 degrees Celsius, and you have your eutectoid isotherm labeled here at 727 degrees Celsius, okay? So, the intersection of the alpha phase with the eutectoid occurs at a composition of 0.022% by weight carbon. And of course, it goes all the way, um, this isotherm goes all the way to the right uh, at 6.7% by weight carbon, which is where you run into your cementite um, intermetallic compound concentration. Now, what do the structures look like? Well. At the eutectoid, when you're going from the gamma phase here across the eutectoid uh, isotherm and down below to this mix of compounds here, mix of phases here, alpha plus cementite, then what happens is once you cross that eutectoid isotherm, you get a structure known as perlite, okay? It's called perlite because it looks like mother of pearl and it's, it's kind of pretty. Um, this has a scale bar of about 120 micrometers. And what perlite is, of course, that lamellar structure that we saw and talked about a little bit for eutectics, the same kind of structure, a lamellar structure, forms at the eutectoid. And it's alternating layers of ferrite and cementite phases.
okay? So that is perlite, which is kind of a beautiful name, I guess. Now, if you have hypo-eutectoid steel, which means that it's to the left of the eutectoid um, point right here, then if you look at what happens to the microstructure, let's say that you're at some intermediate percentage between 0.022 and 0.76% by weight. So we're right here on this little dashed line. We start off and we're in the phase of austenite. Well, it goes liquid and then it goes to the um, austenite plus liquid phase and then you have austenite forming. So you get domains or grains of austenite. Now, once you hit this transformation line right here, okay, then you start to form little nodules of ferrite within it because here's your pure ferrite right here. So in this little triangular white region right here, you've got alpha plus gamma. So this is the alpha plus gamma phase right here. So once you come out of the gamma phase region, you start forming little nodules of ferrite. And then it crosses the eutectoid isotherm, okay? You get increasing concentration of ferrite as you move down, and then when you cross the eutectoid isotherm, then all the places that were austenite, all the places that were the pure austenite before you crossed, become perlite, okay? So you have your, your pro-eutectoid alpha particles, and you also have your perlite, okay? So that's pictured here in this micrograph. Here's the pro-eutectoid ferrite in the solid form, and then here's the perlite with its little mother of pearl looking structure. Okay, now, just like in anything else, I can totally kill the beauty of it by, by putting math to it and making you count weight, <laughs> come up with weight percentages for these things. So you can figure out what the weight percentage of the austenite phase is, okay? By constructing a tie line, just like we did before, you always construct your tie line and then uh, figure out what the ratio of your uh, tie line sides is according to your lever rule. So for example, the weight of the alpha phase would be for this little lowercase r, lowercase s tie line, s over r plus s. Um, and then if you wanted to figure out the weight of the gamma phase, it would just be R over R plus S, or 1 minus the weight of the alpha phase, okay? And then, once you cross your eutectoid isotherm, basically everything that was your gamma phase, your austenite, becomes perlite, okay? Um, and then your pro-eutectoid um, part uh, stays as the pro-eutectoid solid part, which is the weight of the alpha from before. Now, if you want the total weight of alpha phase versus cementite, including both the alpha phase that's in the perlite and the pro-eutectoid nodules, then you use the tie line that goes all the way from the alpha phase to the cementite line over here on the far right hand side. Okay, Then you have the tie line with large R and large S that's shown here. So then if you want the total weight of all the alpha, it would be S over R plus S. And if you want just the cementite, then you would do R over R plus S, and, or you would just find the weight for that total alpha phase and subtract that off. Okay? All right. So that's how to do that. Now let's say that you have hyper-eutectoid steel, which means that you have a concentration greater than 0.76% um, for your carbon. All right. So we're in here in this region. So we drop down out of our austenite phase, and then what happens is we get these little nodules of pro-eutectoid cementite forming, depicted here in red. And those nodules can get bigger and bigger until they form kind of these uh, domains that are shown. Uh, they form the sort of white regions here in this micrograph, okay? So they kind of form veins, I guess, is a way to think of it. So they form veins of pro-eutectoid cementite eventually, starting out as nodules and going to veins. And then once you cross that eutectoid, everything that was gamma becomes perlite, okay? Just like before. So yet again, I can kill anything. So <laughs> if you want to find the weight of the gamma phase, then you can do that by constructing the tie line for Vx here, okay? So V is the short 
part of the tie line that goes from the concentration you're at and intersecting this phase transformation line right here to the gamma phase and then the lowercase x goes all the way from where you're at to the cementite line. Okay. Now once you cross the eutectoid and you want the total concentration of the value, you take your tie line going from the alpha phase all the way across to the cementite and calculate it that way. Okay. Hope that's straightforward. But if it's not, Here's an example problem. Hopefully this will help. So for a 99.6% by weight iron and 0.4% by weight carbon steel at a temperature just below the eutectoid, determine the following. First of all, the compositions of cement, cementite and ferrite. And B, the amount of cementite in grams that forms in 100 grams of steel. And C, the amounts of perlite and pro-eutectoid ferrite in 100 grams. Here we go. All right, so we're in the hypo-eutectoid uh, region. We're to the left of that eutectoid transition um, composition. All right, so if we construct our tie line, um, and the tie line is shown here in the blue and the red, RS is our tie line, and we look at the intersection of that tie line with the phase there, then the composition of the alpha phase is given by the intersection of my tie line with my transition, which is 0.022% by weight of carbon. Remember, I specif specified that at the eutectoid, that's the, the, the composition where the alpha phase intersects right there, 0.022% by weight. Okay, now the cementite, um, that is at 6.7% by weight. So that's the composition of the cementite, 6.7% by weight carbon. Now, if you want instead the weights of the various um, phases, then you've got to use your lever rule. So the weight of the cementite, the total weight, would be equal to R over R plus S. And so that's going to be 0.4 minus 0.022 divided by 6.7 minus 0.022. And that gives us a weight of 0.057 um, Cementite. So that means 5.7% by weight of the material is cementite, which isn't very much. Now, in 100 grams, you would multiply 0.057 times 100, and you would get 5.7 grams of cementite in your uh, material. So that's part B. Next, we're going to use the tie line that's just above the eutectoid to figure out um, how much perlite and pro-eutectoid ferrite there is, okay? So remember that if you use the tie line below the eutectoid, you want the total percent by weight of the two compositions. And if you want the tie line above the eutectoid, you're getting the phase compositions, okay? So here we go with the perlite. Remember the perlite uh, comes from the austenite. So everything that was austenite above the eutectoid transition becomes perlite. So that means that you uh, construct your tie line kind of right above that eutectoid, okay? And then you go down from there. So V over V plus X is our tie line here. You can see that the tie line is kind of this, I don't know, blue-green color, um, and X is the purple. So you have V over V plus X, which gives us these composition differences indicated here. 0.4 minus 0.022 divided by 0.76 minus 0.022, and that gives me 0.512. So it's 51.2% by weight perlite, okay? And the rest would be that pro-eutectoid ferrite, all right? So the amount of perlite in 100 grams would be 51.2 grams, or 0.512 times 100, okay? I hope that's clear. But if not, pause me rewind, go back and look over it. And as always, remember to read the chapter super carefully. Now, of course, steel is not just carbon and iron. Those might be the two most important constituents of steels, but a lot of steels are doped with other materials as well to give desirable properties depending upon the um, application. But we'll talk more about that in a later chapter. But when you dope it with other materials, then it's going to change the temperatures of your eutectoid and the composition of the eutectoid, okay? So, for example, the temperature of the eutectoid actually goes up with um, most dopants, titanium, uh, molybdenum, silicon, tungsten, chromium, 
that increases the temperature of the eutectoid. If you dope it with manganese and nickel, that decreases the temperature of your eutectoid. The composition of the eutectoid also changes, okay, as you dope it with various things. And that's shown here in this diagram. So the iron carbon phase diagram is one of the most important ones in material science. It's also super complicated. People typically only look at the region of the phase diagram that they're interested in for whatever application, okay? A really common one is up to 6.7% by weight. And of course, you're going to alter your composition and temperatures if you dope it with other materials. So if you know that you're going to be working with steel, right, you need to look up the specific value of steel that you're working with. Look up that phase diagram and make sure that you study it and understand it fully before going on to do any kind of uh, recommendations for future employers. All right. Hope that helps.